I want to know how many of the 600,000 people match the terror watch list. Well, um, a Congressman, by definition, they are gotaways. Okay, so you don't know. And so how can you say that the border is secure? And my question to you now is, can you guarantee that none of those people have criminal records? This enforcement work is not fun, Congresswoman. This is a noble profession in which people risk their lives to conduct it. Have you used your authority to suppress exculpatory evidence presented by CBP agents who've come under public attack and condemnation by you and the Biden administration? I don't even know what you're referring to. That was Republicans grilling Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas yesterday during the House hearing. Uh, Mayorkas maintains that the border is secure. Joining us right now is the former acting director of ICE. He is Fox News contributor and Heritage Foundation visiting fellow Tom Homan. Tom, great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. What's your reaction to what you heard from Mayorkas yesterday? He committed perjury. I mean, you can't say the border is secure. The one congressman got it right. Since, Joe, since he's been secretary... Right? Since he's been secretary, we got over one million recorded gotaways on, based on drone traffic or camera traffic. These are recorded by the Border Patrol. Over one million gotaways. So he can't possibly claim this border secure. And they've arrested over 114 known suspected terrorists trying to sneak in this country. How many of that one million are, are, are terrorists and criminals? Bottom line is, he created this crisis, him and the Biden administration created this crisis that has overwhelmed the Border Patrol. So it's beyond an immigration crisis now. It's a public health crisis because of the fentanyl flowing across that border because the Border Patrol is off the line. It's about known suspected terrorists. It's about the record number of, of sex trafficking of children right now that they have lost track of 40 percent of the children they have released to so-called sponsors, they can't even find 40 percent of them. He, how in the hell can he claim this border is secure and safe? It, it's just ridiculous. It's unbelievable. But what's the point here? What is the motivation to keeping this border wide open? I mean, you just named the death and destruction of the migrants coming in. You said a million gotaways. Those are the gotaways we know of that we've seen on yeah. surveillance cameras. We don't know how many we haven't seen and what their intentions are. You know, the greatest question they could have asked yesterday is, Secretary Marcus, you have said numerous times you believe in due process. You believe these people have a right to claim asylum. I'm not going to argue that. But you also know, based on immigration court data, 9 out of 10 will never get relief from U.S. courts. They simply don't qualify for asylum. So if you believe in due process, do you believe that 9 out of 10 that lose that case should be immediately removed per the direction of the federal courts? What's his answer to that? He'll probably say yes, but I can tell you right now, based on... Homeland Security life cycle report, less than 6% leave. He knows by releasing them, he knows by not detaining them, they're never leaving. So people need to understand that 1.7 they released in the country last year, they're here forever. Because he's decapitated ICE. He said ICE can't arrest somebody for simply being here illegally. Yeah. This is all a part of their plan. Not only let millions in, make sure they never leave. But, but why? What, what is the motivation? Are they trying to get these people to become voters? I don't understand. I know right now there's an effort underway in Washington, D.C. to actually get illegals to vote in local elections. Is that the point? Why put I, this country in such jeopardy? I, th I think there's several things. One, number one, I think this administration is sold out to, to the progressive left. I think their ideology is that there shouldn't be borders, should be open borders. Second of all, I think they, they, they perceive a future political benefit. There will be Democratic voters in the future. But they don't even have to get that far. Remember, Joe Biden also overturned the Trump census rule. The next census roll around, millions of these people sitting in sanctuary cities will now be counted in the census, yeah. which is going to do what? It's going to result in more seats in the House for the Democrats. This is about perpetual power. They sold wow. the security of this nation out to have power in Congress. That's incredible. I want to get the panel in here, but let me just get your take on what Texas Governor Greg Abbott is doing. He declared it to be an invasion at the southern border. The state will now be able to deploy the National Guard to the border, order local police to arrest and deport illegal uh, migrants, build border wall in multiple counties, and designate Mexican drug cartels as foreign terrorist organizations. This was a big deal to declare it an invasion, right? It is. It's never been done. Uh, it depends what actions he takes. I want to see what actions he's taking in addition to what he's already doing, because he's already building a wall. He's already got DPS National Guard down there. So what more to do? Will he actually deport people and send them south across the border? I want to see that. Look, sir, Governor Abbott, I love the guy, right? He's done more secure this border than anybody in this administration. You can't name another person in the United States who's done more to try to secure the border and save lives than Governor Abbott. Hats off to him. I'm proud of him.
James. Well, I would just uh, add Governor Abbott, another uh, interesting name. If Republicans are thinking about uh, pre potential presidential candidates who have uh, compiled good records. But, uh, Tom, I want to ask you, now that the Republicans looks like are taking the House, what can they do, probably using the appropriations process, what do you think are the reasonable goals in terms of changing policy now that they have a, a say in that uh, power of the purse? Well, I think there's a couple things they can do. First of all, they need to have oversight hearings and bring these people in, not just my orchids, bring, bring some of these NGOs in that are making millions of dollars because, you know, one of the things people aren't talking about, there's thousands of ass, ICE, ICE detention beds, thousands of them empty, already paid for by the taxpayers. So you can put people in there for free. But they'd rather give a company like Endeavors $370 a night to put in an alien hotel room. So we need to call the secretary in, senior staff. We need to call NGOs and find out what the hell is going on. And ask Secretary Mayorkas, which I haven't seen him do yet, what is the strategy, Secretary? Yeah. What is the plan? You keep saying you got a plan. Well, the plan looks like open borders. So can you tell the uh, taxpayers of the United States, what is your plan to secure this border, save lives, address the known spectators coming across the border? And as you said, purse strings. Look, we got over, we got over 100,000 Americans dying of uh, drug overdoses of drugs that are pouring across the border because yeah. Border Patrol is overwhelmed. You got 114 known and suspected terrorists across that border. You got one man, Gatto, he's how many unknown suspected terrorists. You, you got you got criminal cartels making billions of dollars. At what point is enough enough that the Republican House can say, look, if you don't do a single thing to slow the flow, yeah. we're shutting it down. Well, we'll shut the government and, down. And these are not overdoses. These are the poisoning of American citizens. Americans are yeah. getting poisoned, and you haven't heard a peep out of Joe Biden about it. Tom, thanks very much. We'll keep watching that story. Tom Holman joining us this morning.